Hello and welcome to the first video in a series where I'm going to show all of you how to solo flawless every single dungeon in Destiny 2 step by step on each specific class without requiring any raid weapons or difficult to get weapons. I think this is the best season in Destiny 2 history to complete any solo flawless dungeons that you've not completed yet or even potentially embark on your journey to solo flawless your very first dungeon which I think is something that absolutely everyone can do after watching this video. I think solo flawless dungeons is one of the best thing to do in Destiny 2 in terms of upgrading your skill level and helping you master your class a little bit more, I highly recommend you give them a go. Main reason that this is such a good season to do it is one, it's a very long season, we're running out of things to do and we don't have content until June, so might as well try something new, right? Additionally, the seasonal mods are very, very good, namely Solo Operative for Solo Flaws and Dungeons, and all of the mods that allow you to get Radiant and Ignite targets without actually having to be on a Solar subclass. Very, very strong stuff. Today we're going to do so Fall Shared Throne on a Hunter. I'm just going to kind of show the builds on screen, not going to go over them in depth. You'll kind of see how they work as we go, and I don't want to overload you guys with information make this unnecessarily long. So you can just take a screenshot, uh, stat prioritization is on here, really just resilience and discipline that you have to worry about. Here's all the fragments and abilities and aspects and whatnot. And then here's the mod page right here. You can make some tweaks if you'd like, if you think that something else would serve you better. Uh, but I will have all of this in a Destiny Item Manager link in the description if you just wanna click that and copy all this over uh, just like that. In terms of weapons that you should bring, I'd recommend bringing a one-two punch shotgun. If you have it, the new Scatter Signal Seasonal Fusion Rifle, really any fusion rifle can work, but I like this one a lot. I think it's the best damage fusion rifle in the game, if I'm not mistaken. These are the craft perks you should have on it. Don't worry if you can't get the enhanced ones. It's not a big deal. I also recommend a solar energy weapon, something like a solar submachine gun, solar auto rifle, uh, maybe even a solar hand cannon, something of that nature. Solar weapons, like I said, are just super good this season because of the seasonal artifact mods. And then I recommend Dragon's Breath in the heavy slot. It's okay if you don't have the catalyst. Definitely helps uh, make the weapon a little bit better, but definitely not required by any means. I also recommend a auto-loading or reconstruction legendary rocket so i've got this palmier b right here if you have some of like the apex predator definitely use that but like i said you don't have to have any raid weapons for this so not required even though technically you can get this from the wishes you don't actually have to raid to get this but uh if you do have this this is the crafted roll that you'll probably want to go ahead and make it with otherwise you can go with the palmier b or something else with auto loading holster you'll be perfectly fine only other thing is a long range energy weapon. I've got this pre Astyan X solar bow. You can go with the scout rifle, pretty much anything like that. Not really that big of a deal, whatever works for you. For exotic armor, obviously assassin's cow. And then I also recommend you have a pair of stompies as well. Um, just for one particular portion of this, you'll see why once we get into it. I believe that's everything. So let's get started with how to actually solo applause this thing. Before we actually start the run, I do want to show a map of the first encounter. This is one made by my friend Ibantis. I recommend you take a screenshot of it and just kind of have it by your side while you do this first section, especially if you're unfamiliar with the arena of Shattered Throne, namely the locations of these symbols right here, this infinity looking snake, these two fish in a circle, the one fish in a circle, etc., etc going to be very very helpful to have that map on deck uh, for making this a little bit quicker so you're not wandering around aimlessly uh, endlessly searching for stuff so how to actually do this is very very simple on an arc hunter we're basically going to run up melee an enemy and kill it that'll make us invisible through assassin's cow um, we're then going to dodge next to an enemy to get our melee ability back and then we're just going to punch stuff to get our class ability back as combination blow when you get a final blow on something you refund your class ability and obviously when you use your gambler's dodge class ability you refund your melee that'll stack up our combination blow to have our melee do significantly more damage combine that with our one two punch shotgun basically nuke everything in one shot also worth noting if you're on mouse and keyboard do make sure that you are using the auto melee for your melee keybind as opposed to the charge and uncharge melee if you're on controller you should have auto melee by default so you don't have to worry about it so after killing that first night we do have the cloud snake or the W snake, which is easily accessible if we come out here to the left and then take a little bit of a right. I'm gonna go ahead and try and stack my combination blow on the way. Uh, one, cause it'll mean I'll do a heck of a lot more damage to the boss over here when I do get here. And two, it makes me invisible. So I'm safe traveling this direction. I'm gonna run over here, melee dodge, melee dodge, melee dodge, stack up my combination blow a bunch. So I get times three, got the minotaur, one, two punch shotgun, and he's gone just like that. 
clean up the rest of the ads. Now I see I have one fish circle, from which I remember from the map is going to be over here on this right side. When you do come to this right side initially, be a little bit careful because you will get some phalanxes. That can be kind of annoying, um, especially considering that you're running the melee build. They're not, you know, too terrible to deal with, but definitely make sure you take them out so that they're not wandering around to boop you off the map. As you can see here, this build does absolute light work of everything. Super, super simple. We've got the bird, boring bird, as a lot of people call it. I'm gonna run over here. And also if you're dealing with the phalanxes, something that can really, really help is if they put their shield up, shoot their feet. And then they can't really, they get staggered and they don't actually do the blast towards you. Another fun little tip. So we're gonna run in here, kill this pop goblin. Usually just takes a uh, one, two punch, double melee. We'll kill all of the majors in this little section. Done with that boring bird. Now we have Infinity Snake. I believe Infinity Snake is the back right part of this arena. Um, so my favorite way to get there, you could scale the upper side of this arena, like run across the roof. My problem with that though, is then you're really vulnerable to all the hobgoblins, which I don't love. A bunch of hobgoblin snipers up there. So I prefer to just come down here instead and run through that W snake room. Um, just feels a lot safer. So I'm gonna go ahead and dodge over here, get our combination blow stacked up again on some of this thrall. Also gonna get that invisibility from Assassin's Cow, so we're more safe running around here. Not like we're gonna get one shot by anything uh, or anything of that nature, but generally speaking, better to be safer in a solo flaws dungeon rather than not being safe. Amplified is also gonna make this section a lot more enjoyable because it's gonna make it so that we can kind of just sprint past everything and we get around super quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and nuke that guy. And then we have got the Dragon Breathing Fire, which is gonna be more towards where you spawn in on the left side of the map. From, well, from my perspective, it's on the right side because I'm running backwards. But once again, like I said, if you have that, um, that map screenshot of that pulled up side by side by you while you do this, makes it a heck of a lot easier. This guy you definitely want to be careful about because he has the uh, Taken like, Shredder shotgun. Um, obviously, I made light work of him just like all the others, but that one you do want to make sure you have invisibility before you begin to approach him. Finally, we have the two fish in a circle. Um, for the two fish in a circle, this is the one where you're going to want to use your super. So as I come down here, first things first, I'm gonna have this taken captain that I'll punch. And the reason I recommend super here is because this is the phalanx. And you'll see that he likes to have you in this tight hallway and he's gonna try and boop you off into the abyss right there. So I really like just launching my super at that guy. I don't really like messing around with him and going back and forth between the lane because he just kind of likes to boop you off the map and I don't like messing with that. Finally, we have the bird that's like looking straight down, diving down, dive bomb bird, whatever you want to call it. That is the final symbol. That means you're going to go right back to kind of where you started and you're going to have a taken captain left over. You'll notice I'm not really using any heavy ammo. Um, that is because Shattered Throne, although still the easiest dungeon to solo flawless by far, does have the one downside of not having any rally flags. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Definitely want to be a little more conservative when it comes to heavy ammo. Um, if you have a heavy ammo brick laying around, obviously you can launch a rocket at something if you want to and then pick up the brick to top back off on your ammo. Uh, but I just kind of like conserving it for the uh, first boss that we're going to run into, the ogre in this dungeon. So once we go ahead and dispatch that encounter, we're going to go ahead and continue on our way, making our way over here. If you are confident in this section and you have like an E or Edge sword, you can try to like maybe do like a strand grapple grenade real quick and E or Edge over that ledge to get to high ground. Me personally, I'm just going to show the basic way of doing this. It adds like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds maximum to the run. Um, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, something like that. Not really bad at all. Just gonna once again run down here, start meleeing everything, get your combination blow going, get that stacked up to times three. And uh, then it makes it pretty simple to go ahead and safely get up here. You will have some phalanxes that are kind of waiting for you around the corner. Um, but once I get here, I like to go ahead and dodge 
and melee all of the vandal snipers so that they're not just kind of shooting at me um and plinking away at me kind of like dispatching everything on the outskirts right here vandal snipers the minotaurs all that kind of stuff and then once i have all of them dispatched then i'm much more comfortable to go ahead and take out this guy you can also use your super on him right now if you'd like but i just kind of like to showcase how incredibly strong this build is um don't really need your super uh, when you have melees this powerful. Now this is the section where I'm going to recommend that you switch to your long range weapons. Like I said, I brought that pretty SDNX bow. Um, you don't have to kill these two vandals right here, but I do like killing them in case you try to enter into this hallway and you're fighting some and you get a little weak or something of that nature. But this is where this long range weapon is going to work wonders for taking out like all of these enemies from far away, these taken knights, um, everything of that nature. This is the safe way of doing this. Um, however, there is of course a different way to go about this if you want to go the not so safe way. And the not so safe way involves just using uh, amplified running and Assassin's Cowl invisibility to absolutely sprint through this entire section. Uh, the safe way is obviously chipping through bit by bit and working through with your long range weapon. But the unsafe but really fast way is to just go ahead and dodge and punch everything and get invisibility and get amplified and sprint through this entire section. Hit a little dodge, punch that guy to go invisible. Another instance of invisibility. Another instance of invisibility. And just like that, you're through this entire section. Like I said, up to you, whatever you prefer. Um, if it's your very first time solo policy in a dungeon, I'd probably say take that step by step and just plank away at the odds with the bow or the scout rifle or something of that nature. Um, if uh, you feel a little more comfortable doing the brush method, obviously you can go ahead and do that. Still with your long range weapon, we are at the ogre section. And this is a part where you're gonna wanna run, a, wanna try and sprint through as fast as you can. I really, 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 really recommend against that as much as humanly possible. You really just wanna take your time and plink away at the ogres. Sometimes they will go and hide behind the pillars. I find that sometimes if you back off a lot, you can kind of bait them into uh, re-pushing but sometimes they'll just be really, really scared um, and really sit back there and bait you out, in which case you'll uh, have to go ahead and push them. It's not the end of the world, obviously, because uh, typically you'll be able to get a few shots on them before they actually start to run away and hide. Um, but yeah, just take your time, link away at them. You'll notice this pillar has the Taken Blights flying around it. Um, it can be random which one has the blights on it. Sometimes it could be this one, other times it could be that one, but you just kind of want to advance slowly, figure out which pillar is going to have the blights that spawn on it, and then you'll uh, make your pathing decisions as necessary. New ogre spawning, so we're just going to hang out back here, flank away at it with the bow, make sure we take it out. Once he is dispatched, we can go ahead and continue on our way and take his new platform. It's a section that uh, is probably going to be pretty daunting, to a lot of people. Um, this is where I'm actually going to use a shot of heavy ammo. Take that guy out. Um, like I said, section that is going to be a lot pretty daunting to people. Take it slow. Um, stay away from the pillars that have the blight orbs on them. You'll be fine. This section can be a little funky. Um, I kind of like jumping for this one because since it's lower, it gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room to fall onto. So I kind of like to use my first jump to make the distance and my second jump as a repositioning tool. Now here is where you really got to go fast and I really recommend you save your grenade for this guy because he's going to spawn right in front of you and you kind of have to rush him because you have nowhere to fall back onto. Um, as long as you run in a straight line, it shouldn't matter that much if he shoots you because you're looking at him head on. So he's just going to push you backwards. He won't push you off the rail. So you should be fine either way, um, but I do recommend kind of charging that guy. For the Thrallway, uh, you will not be able to sprint and you won't be able to heal, but considering you have an exotic 
and a melee ability that heal you for every kill that you get. Uh, that's not really that much of a problem. So this throwaway section is super easy on Arc Hunter. And you can even get through it a little bit more quickly uh, with just a little punch, dodge, punch, dodge, punch, dodge, because your dodge is obviously going to move you a little bit more quickly throughout the throwaway. But a uh, pretty simple path, as you can see here. I'm just following the path that I'm taking. It's pretty much what this whole video is. It's just do whatever I'm doing on screen and uh, should get you through rather nicely. And then we'll hop on down, buffer our jump. And just like that, we're through the throwaway. Go ahead and punch that guy to maintain combination blow. Gonna give me amplified as well. So we can sprint a little bit more quickly through this section. And we're gonna be coming up on the ogre boss this is where you might have some enemies spawn that's what our long range weapon is for I'm gonna go ahead and continue traversing this area making sure you're watching out for these little lights that can boop you off if you are really 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 solid on heavy ammo at this point you can maybe throw on a sword so that if you do get nudged by one of those uh, things, the taken pusher, what I don't know what you would call them. Um, then you can just use your sword to swipe back and be good to go. Um, I find that they're not too difficult to avoid as long as you're just kind of keeping an eye out for them. I think there's only really even one that you have to run past if you follow the path that I went. I'm going to go ahead and kill all these phalanxes. And that'll open this door. This is where I recommend you switch back to your SMG um, or an auto rifle is definitely what you're going to want for this encounter. I also recommend you now switch the shotgun to your fusion rifle, whatever damage fusion rifle you have. I have the scatter signal, but whatever you have, I'm sure it'll work fine. So for this encounter, the checkpoint logging can be a little weird and buggy. So what you really want to do is you kind of want to go back and forth to make sure that the checkpoint actually updates. I can't actually recall if it's right here. I apologize. It's, this is the, my first try, my first take. So i um, trying to double check and make sure that I am actually correct. You'll see it in the top left. It should be like a little objective update right there new objective so if you get to this point and you don't see new objective you'll kind of want to run backwards right here and kind of run all the way back and then cycle back through this way and just keep doing that until you get that objective update in the top left like you saw i got so this is uh probably one of the most daunting encounters of the solo flaws but it's actually rather easy especially with the build and the setup that we have First things first, we're going to get our combination blow times three stacked up. And we're going to wait until the trash mob spawn to be able to do that. This first enemy is going to take two punches. Um, second enemy is going to also take two punches. And then from there on out, everything gets one hit. So we're just going to roll around, punch these guys. They just die in a couple of hits. And the wizards uh, obviously are going to drop the petitioner's mark. That will last for 40 seconds. We need to collect all four of them to get to DPS phase. So basically what we're doing is we're just running around and we're punching all these enemies and getting all the petitioner's marks and killing everything. With Amplified, you get to everything super quickly. Obviously, as you can see, the void invisibility lasts long enough uh, to make it from station to station very, very safely. We'll run over here and punch this guy. Just a spam in your melee button. It is, really is that simple. I'm gonna go ahead and finish things up right here. And we're gonna get ready to kill the ogre. I like to start DPS over at one of the closer stations. That way, if I do not one phase, I can get straight back into the next phase rather easily. But one phasing is pretty darn easy with this loadout. You're just gonna throw your gathering storm, your pulse grenade, shoot your dragon's breath, shoot a couple shots with the fusion rifle, maybe wait a little bit for that dragon's breath to reload, a couple more shots with the fusion rifle. He really does die that quickly. Um, again, if you don't one phase, all you'll do is turn around, run back to that entrance area and start punching everything, get your combination blow stacked up again, do the entire loop one more time. And you're good to go. 
It's really that simple. For this section, like I said, we're gonna be switching up the loadout just a little bit. I like to go to that auto loading rocket, as I said. I'm gonna use Palmyra B, because like I said, we're not gonna do any raid weapons for this run, but you can really use whatever you like. I also, I think I'm gonna stick with the scatter signal. Like I said, this is my first take, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna like the best here. Uh, we're just kind of winging it and figuring it out as we go. But uh, I think we should be good. I know I don't have an exotic weapon on right now. It probably seems like sacrilege, but uh, I, th I think we'll be okay with what we're currently running. You might be asking yourself, well, if you're not using your exotic slot, why not just use Dragon's Breath? And the reason I don't like using Dragon's Breath is that for the final encounter, I want to be able to use my rockets to kill the large knights. Uh, but I don't want to use Dragon's Breath because that puts the exploding rocket flammable grenade thing on the ground. And I have to run over the dead bodies of the knights to get the DPS buff. So I don't really like using Dragon's Breath because then I have to run into terrain that's on fire and get to do self damage to me. Not that great of a situation. As you can see right there, I just literally ran past those four wizards. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, this entire section, we're kind of just going to run past. We're going to, you know, punch a couple of enemies, get our combination blow stacked up so that we can easily one hit anything. And once we have our combination blow stacked up and our invisibility, we're just going to kind of run forward and skip past mostly everything. Also have our Amplified, so we're going to be able to sprint a little bit more quickly. But, uh, I mean, you can kill everything if you'd like. It's just uh, not particularly necessary. Once again, I'm just going to keep sprinting past everything. Uh, this captain may be worthwhile to kill. Get our combination blow stacking once again. going to chip away at this guy. Get our combination blow going again. Kind of up to you how much stuff you want to kill. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just kind of trying to go fast. I want to make this video longer than it needs to be. Solar weapon feels really nice here for popping the shields. Punch him for the combination blow times three, maintain, and the invisibility. Do a little dodge, punch this guy for the same reasons, and we keep on going. Now, if you're low on ammo at this point, like I am, it can be very, very nice. This is the one saving grace of Shattered Throne, even though it does not have rally flags. You can sit in this hallway and just continuously kill these Thrall until you eventually get some heavy bricks. Um, you don't need that much heavy. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna kill a couple and hope that I get like one or two more bricks so I can walk in with five rockets. But like I said, you can stay here. You, you, you can stay here for max heavy if you'd like. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, that's probably the safest bet. If you're doing the solo flawless, you probably want to go with the safest bet. And as you can see, they don't exactly pose much of a threat. Um, so there's pretty much all our heavy. So now I'm going to go ahead and punch a couple guys and go invis. And right here is where I want to have my stompies equipped. So we're going to go ahead and go into our inventory, unequip that, and put our stompies on. And the reason we love stompies here is because we can skip the rather brutal wall section of this solo flawless dungeon. So I'm going to kind of like get up on this rock over here so that these thrall can't mess with me. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to jump right on that ring very, very carefully. So I'm going to come over here. There's actually another rock I can do. I'm just going to jump up, and I'm going to just try and mantle the ring. You obviously want to be very careful, because if you go too far and you mess it up, you're going to fall to your death. So try to undershoot the jump and really rely on your mantle to get up there. If you try and overshoot and land directly on it, you'll potentially fall to your death. So we're just kind of, we're kind of undershooting the jump. Once you're up here, you can hit a quick sprint. So you'll just kind of like sprint right away and do your jump, do your bunny hop one two and you clear it very easily if you are nearing the lip of it something that you can do on your jump is you'll do both your jumps and then as you're flying in you can cast your super 
and it'll carry your momentum a little bit if you notice that you're a little tight on the jump. Um, but it shouldn't be that necessary with zombies. It's pretty easy. You can also temporarily switch to a sword if you would like, just to really make sure that you get that extra bit of clearance, especially if you have an eager edge sword. It makes that obviously complete cakewalk. So that's all you really need zombies for. So since we're good to go on that, we'll go ahead and get our assassin's cowl back on. Um, obviously, if you do switch to a sword to make that a little bit easier, you'll lose a little bit of heavy ammo. But like I said, you really don't need max heavy ammo to get through this section really, really, really easily. So it's really not the end of the world. So we're going to go ahead and make our way up here. And so basically the way I like to do this is I like to I'm going to kind of talk through what I'm going to do before I do it. But we're going to have some scion spawn over there and over there. What I like to do is I like to throw my pulse grenade at this side to kill that entire pack of scions. And then I like to run over here to kill these guys by hand. But while that's happening, I want to kill all of these knights standing right here. So what I like to do is I like to start with the super. Then I shoot a rocket that's going to get all the load in the background. Then I like to throw my grenade over there. And then I'm going to run over to the right side to kill all of them. So we're going to throw a super, rocket, chuck my grenade over there. If you miss, it's not really a big deal. Um, the seasonal mods make it super easy to wipe the floor with all these ions. So we're just going to kind of run over here. And most of these knights are super weak, so we can just use the fusion rifle to finish them off. This is where that high damage fusion rifle really comes in clutch. And as you can see, we have all three of our damage buff things right here. After that, I just kind of like to sit behind a pillar and go back and forth with my auto-loading rocket and my fusion rifle. And you can really take your time here. You have a very, very, very long time. You have 45 seconds to do your damage buff. I've got a tracking rocket right here. And if you do feel like you're kind of getting close to running out of time, it's okay. You can always hop on that plate to get rid of your damage buff and go ahead and go another phase with the boss. It's really not a big deal. The last thing you want to do is feel rushed for damage, so much so to the point where you're peaking when you're very, very low on HP. Like, I'm perfectly fine sitting here and letting my HP regen and whatnot. Um, you really want to play that safe, play the pillar, weave back and forth so you're not getting beam by your shots. And it's not so bad. So hopefully, this helped you solo Flawless Shattered Throne. I would imagine a lot of you that are watching this are probably watching this because you're maybe looking to solo Flawless your very first dungeon. I hope that when you get to this point, um, you have indeed solo Flawless your first dungeon. I don't care what kind of player you are. I don't care if you're a dad gamer. I don't care if you work 80 hours a week. Anyone can do this if they follow this guide to a T. It might take you a couple practice runs. I'm not saying you can do it first try, but I guarantee anyone can do this. Do me a favor if you do do this, uh, consider coming back, liking the video, and subscribing to the channel. Maybe leaving a comment letting me know that you did do it. Um, and maybe even come to my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash backticks, and say like, hey, just want to say I watched your Solo Falls Shattered Throne video, and I uh, got Solo Falls because of it. And that let me know that these videos are uh, actually working. So uh, if this video gets a lot of interest, um, I'll make it on Warlock and Titan, and then we'll continue through the rest of every single other Soul Falls dungeon in the entire game, because like I said, best season to do them, and uh, we all definitely need stuff to do in the season of Destiny. So hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.